My name is Aaron Massey and welcome back to another episode of Homeschooled. For today's episode, I'm going to share with you the do's and don'ts when it comes to using DIY spray foam insulation around your home. As someone who has done extensive remodeling on a number of homes, I've come across spray foam insulation being used by many DIYers in just about every way imaginable. But just because you can use it for a variety of purposes doesn't necessarily mean that you should. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the ways that I use spray foam insulation in my remodeling projects and some applications where I don't recommend it or I think a better solution is required. Today I'm going to be using the Loctite Tight Foam family of spray foam products. Loctite was generous enough to sponsor this video and their spray foam products are something I use all the time. They have a variety of cans that you can find available at Home Depot from window and door to gaps and cracks. So I wanted to say a quick thank you to Loctite for making this video possible. So let's dive in. Whenever you're installing windows and doors, the rough openings are always slightly larger than the window or door itself. That means you're always left with a small gap that can create drafts, air loss, or be an avenue for pests to find their way in. In this case, you should definitely use the window and door spray foam. The window and door foam expands at low pressure compared to other types, so you won't risk bending or bowing the door or window jams, causing problems with their operation. Next, let's talk about cracks. Not all cracks are created equal. For example, if I come across a crack in a foundation like this one, spray foam insulation wouldn't be my go-to fix. Foundation cracks can be superficial or they may be structural. So understanding the problem is essential to creating the right fix. I would never use spray foam to address a structural problem like a foundation crack. The same goes for most cracks in concrete, including sidewalks, driveways, patios, etc. Instead, I would use something like an epoxy, rebar, and probably concrete patch to fix a structural crack. In my opinion, one of the best uses for spray foam applications is to use it for air sealing. When I recently replaced the insulation in my attic, I first went through and sealed all the visible cracks and penetrations I could see in the attic before adding the blown-in insulation on top. Filling any voids with spray foam makes sure that you have a tight building envelope between your living space and the attic. I have a very old home, so I climbed around in the dark in my attic and looked for light leaks from down below, and I filled those areas with spray foam. The same can be said for crawl spaces beneath the house that can be spots where air loss occurs as well. One of the biggest no-nos I've seen from DIYers is using spray foam to fill structural gaps in framing. I've opened up some walls and found that sometimes people will miscut a piece of lumber and rather than recutting it to the proper size, they just slap it in place and fill the gap with spray foam. Now, you might be surprised how often this happens, especially in DIY flip houses. So don't use spray foam to fill any structural gaps because it's not a structurally rated product. I have a really old house, so there are a lot of unseen areas where there are small holes or cracks, and I typically find them after I find some unwanted visitors in the house. One of my favorite applications for spray foam is to fill those areas to seal out ants, spiders, and other insects. Typically with ants, I can follow their trail to see where they're coming from, and then use spray foam to fill those areas. Now, if the hole or penetration is larger, like something that a mouse or a rat can get through, I don't recommend using spray foam unless you add some wire mesh to the area first. Larger pests like that can sometimes chew their way through the foam and get right back in. Another area to be careful of is using spray foam in eaves and soffits. Now these are common trouble areas for bees nests and squirrels and stuff like that, and many homeowners elect to spray foam to seal out the bees or whatever. However, you always want to be careful that you're not interfering with your home's ability to breathe properly. Many homes have vented eaves and soffits that allow your attic to vent properly, and by filling in these areas, your attic space can't vent properly. If it's one trouble spot, it's probably not a big deal, but be conscious if you find yourself sealing out large areas in the attic that you may be affecting your home's ability to vent properly. Probably the most common use that I use for spray foam is electrical and plumbing penetrations into a home. I always like to seal around exterior or electrical boxes and any plumbing pipe penetrations around the perimeter of my house because these are really common points of drafts as well as they can act as super highways for critters to come in and out of your house. 
However, it's important to make sure a fire rated foam isn't required by code in your area. Another huge fail for spray foam is people using it to try and stop leaks. Rather than fixing the underlying issue, I have seen some homes where people have attempted to stop a leak from a pipe or from a water line with spray foam. Please don't use spray foam for this. It won't solve the problem and will most likely result in larger damage taking place once the water finds a way out. Depending on the application, the foam can actually allow the water to build up, which can lead to serious mold problems. So do yourself a favor, and if you're experiencing any kind of water leak, avoid using spray foam as a Band-Aid. And if you're not sure what else to do, just call a plumber. People have a tendency to spray things and to try to fix issues and find uses just so they can use the whole can before the nozzle gets plugged up and they can't use the can anymore. This is an industry-wide issue. It happens with all spray foam cans that you use, regardless of brand. Trust me, I know that can be frustrating, but here's what I would recommend instead. Use the can in moderation and only as much as you need. Remember that these products expand somewhat exponentially. So as far as reusing the can, I recommend that you just buy a bunch of extra straws. You could snag a whole pack online for just a few bucks, keeps you from wasting a bunch of money on new cans and throwing things away that you don't need to. Or the other option is you can use some acetone to clean out the straws before the foam dries, and that way you can reuse the straws later on. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you never miss out on any of the new content that I put out. I also wanted to say a quick thank you to Loctite for making this video possible and allowing me to share how to properly use spray foam. If you guys do need some spray foam for your next project, I encourage you to check out their products, which you can find at your local Home Depot. And as always, you can find all my DIY how-to and home improvement content on my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.